Hello, it's Dawn, and this is Dawn Versations. I'm so happy to have you here. We talk about anything and everything. It's just a potpourri of topics, and that's just the way I like it. If you like surprises and you like variety, this is the show for you. Let's go. Welcome to another episode of Dawn Versations. Today we have Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Welcome to the show. Hello, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for taking the time to be here. I really appreciate it. And I am so excited to get your message out there and talk about your book. Um, and I know that you're a former military too. So thank you for your service. How many thank years you. did you serve? Over 20. I was actually 24, as a matter of fact, just a shade over 24 years. Oh my gosh. So are you retired then or do you work? What do you do? I do. I, I work full time right now. It's just, it's, it's because. You still have bills to pay. So even though you have the the access to the pension uh, as a uh, military person as retired, you still want to have a, 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 a nice cushion. So I still work. Yeah, good for you. Are you um, now you've got one book. Are, are you trying to write another book? Well, I, I have a couple of ideas swirling in my head. OK, but, OK. Uh, I, I, I did have another one that I, I was featured in. Uh, it, it's actually called uh, uh, Unknown Battlefields, The Footsteps of a Soldier. And what it is, is an anthology of, of so, um, short, short stories and pieces that were written by people in the armed forces and their family members. So it, it gives the reader a kind of a perspective of the battles that um that service members actually have in while they're in uniform. And my piece in particular was me uh, confronting a an, an overt uh, situation of racism, you know? So, and, and I think it, it's, it'll open people's mind, eyes when they read it from my perspective, you know, because a lot of people don't see those things because we keep them inside, you know, right. but this, this book will actually have you go into the mind of what happens when you get into those situations and how you react to it. And in my my personal uh, case, it was one of those things that fueled my fire to succeed. It, 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 it actually worked out for me. I, I uh, encountered a situation where it was overt racism and it actually, instead of taking it as a negative, it kind of fueled me. OK, I'm going to show him. So and it just took off from there. Isn't that so interesting how how negatives can turn into positives like that or completely change the trajectory of where you were going? And then yes. it's just one little pivotal. Well, it wasn't little. Obviously, racism's not little, but one moment and it just changed everything for you. That's amazing. Yes. I was going to ask I mean, you. OK, so go ahead. Go ahead. And the, the interesting thing about it is the person that had the, that I had the confrontation with, he saw nothing wrong with it. And even after I explained it to him, he still didn't see anything wrong with it. And that's what it was like, OK, we have to shift focus and 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 move in another direction, like you said uh, a few seconds ago. And it, it it definitely changed my focus of everything from that point on. Yeah, gosh, that's so interesting. OK, so, yeah, I was going to ask you, but I want you to hold up your book and show it because it's a long title and I don't want to mess it <laughs> up. So I want you to show your book and say the title, but I want to find out from you if a lot of the lessons that you learned that are in that book, were they from the military, the time you spent in the military, or was that after? Oh, absolutely. It was, it, it's a combination of a lot of things, but, you know, I spent basically almost my entire adult life thus far in mm -hmm. the military. So I essentially matured, if you will, for lack of a better term, while I was in the Air Force. But a lot of the lessons that I talk about in the book were from a combination of the Air Force and people that I grew up with, you know, teachers, mentors, my parents, you know, there were a lot of people that were in there. And the interesting thing about the book is I, I, it wasn't supposed to be a book. It was a, like a series of personal essays that I was going to use for personal reflection. Mm, and like as a journal? I, yeah, absolutely. And then once I started reading it as a reader and not a writer, it was like, wait a minute, I'm not the only one that can use this. So I just went, oh, you know what, let me go ahead and publish it. You know, and and that's what I did. You know, so it, it's one of those things where, as a as a self development book author, because I don't like to call it self help, but I call it <laughs> self development because the the things in there, the the challenge that I have is I, I have the human ego 
to break through. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people, you know, it's ain't nothing wrong with me. Well, there was nothing wrong with me either until I realized there was, you know, so oh, it takes very that, right. It, yeah, it, it, it takes that that aha moment for you to understand where I'm coming from with the book. And and I wrote it very um, intentionally, if you will, the, the the way that it's arranged, it actually goes from hey, I, I know where you've been. This is where I was, you know, and then we, okay, let's start from the foundation and build from there. So it's it's very systematic the way that my book is arranged. And once a person starts reading it, they will see, okay, now I understand and we can go that way. Gosh, that had to have been so therapeutic for you to, it to write it all down. Therapy. Yeah. It was complete therapy. It was, it was like my own you know, it, it, it's, it was like self-therapy, you know, I, it forced me to have to relive a lot of less, a lot of the lessons that I was taught growing up and up to that point had chosen to ignore <laughs> and writing it, it was like, okay, now I really have to remember that. Okay. Now it makes sense. I got it now. Yeah. <laughs> So the person that you interacted with that had the racism, was that kind of similar? Like they were brought up with certain beliefs and they didn't see anything oh, wrong I'm, with that because I'm that's how, sure. yeah. yeah. And the fact I'm that they didn't sure. change their mind, I mean, I and guess it, that just was, shows growth. It, it, it was interesting because looking back in it in retrospect, it was one of those things where, okay, he didn't see anything wrong with it. That's one thing. But when you elevate the problem and people make excuses for it, it's like, OK, now I get it. You know, it nobody's going to do anything because they, they they I was basically told that's how he is. Well, I, I don't hate care. that. I don't I don't care that I don't care. That's how he is. I'm telling you what I feel. And nobody wanted to do anything. OK, now I have to do it myself. <laughs> yeah, good for you. I hate that term. When people say that, oh, that's just how they are. It's like, that doesn't make it right. You know, that's exactly. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> um, so what is, what's your favorite part of the book? Like, do you well, have it's, a favorite it's very, part? It's, it's hard to say. And, and before we get any further, let's, let's get oh, yeah. the title out of the way. <laughs> okay. Right. So the title, the title of the book is Don't Gamble on Life Improvement Until You Shift the Odds. And a lot of people see this book because they see the dice on the cover. They think it automatically goes with gambling. It has nothing to do with it. It's This whole cover is a a metaphor for what I learned in life is don't try to make changes to your life until you first change your thinking. And that's the key to the book. So it's kind of hard to say what is a favorite of mine. But, you know, I, it, because I like the entire book, but one right. of my favorite, one of my favorite chapters is kind of cha- is actually chapter 11 is where I, I show the reader how to put these things together. And, and there, the way that the book is set up is set up with a series of topics that I think contribute most to the chaos that we encounter in life. And at the end, towards the end, I show people, OK, now we have all of these things that we've identified. Here's how you put them together and make them work for you. Oh, that's great. I love that it's laid out like that. Did, could you see in the book the epiphany moment or when the light bulb came on where you finally decided that that's where the shift started to happen? Oh, it was it wasn't the book that did it. It was actually a meeting with a, a mentor of mine that I had in the Air Force. And I was struggling with life. You know, it wasn't going the way that I wanted it to go. And I had to sit down with him and he he gave he asked me two questions. And um, those two questions actually changed the way I thought because he forced me to challenge the way I thought up to that point. Uh, the first question he asked me was, why do you insist on shortchanging yourself? And I didn't think that I was, you know, it was like, okay, I didn't think I was shortchanging myself. But the second question he asked me, he said, I see you blaming any and everybody for your misfortune. Have you ever looked in the mirror? Whoa. And (laughs) I was, I was stumped. I was stumped. I had no answer to that. Um, But he said, I'm going to pick this conversation up with you in 40, 48 hours. He said, I want you to go home. I want you to look at a situation that you are unhappy with. And then I want you to look at your role in that situation because you may not have had the determining role, but you had a role nonetheless. And something you you had control of may have changed the dynamics of that situation. 
And it forced me to go back and look at a lot of things that I was doing wow. or not doing in that sense. So one, what he did was he did two things. One, he pissed me off because he <laughs> asked that question. But, but, but more importantly, he got my attention. And that's what made me focus on how I was thinking. What would you say is the, if you had to summarize in one sentence, your book, what would you say? Like, what is it? it? it, I would say my book is probably the best way I can describe it is transformational. And what it does, and the reason I say that is because what I try to do, and I try to write it that way, is I didn't want my reader to think they were reading a book. I wanted them to think that they were having a conversation with someone. And that's how I wrote it. Uh, I wrote it with a lot of personal stories and personal experiences that I have seen and seen other people go through so that the reader can put themselves in the situation and go, okay, somebody else is going through this as well. And this is what they did. I've never tried it. So let me try what they did. Oh, that's great. That's a great way to get people's perspective because Mm -hmm. like you said, not read it like you're a reader because that's easy. But if you actually have to become part of the book that forces you to think like what exactly. yeah, I love that. So you said you have a formula for overcoming life's obstacles. It's simpler than you would think. So what what is That's, it? Absolutely. Well, it's simpler than a lot of people may think, but it's not what they would expect. And what I have is a it's a four element formula. It's very simple. If you put it in perspective, I always tell people to keep things in perspective instead of trying to force them into your perception. So what I I tell them is there are four ways. If you put these things in balance with each other, there's no way you can't succeed. And it's at the end of the book. It's called my DOME formula, D-O-M-E. And what it stands for is desire, opportunity, means, and education. You put those things in balance with each other, there's no way you can't do anything because you have all of the elements in place. What usually happens is one or more of those four things are imbalanced with the uh, with the, each other and the formula gets thrown off. A person has a desire, but they don't have the opportunity. The opportunity is there, they don't have the desire. So there's you have to have everything in balance in order for the, the formula to work. And if you balance it out, there's no way you can't do anything. <laughs> do you think people just get in their own way then? Is that the moral of the story? <laughs> <laughs> that is, you just nailed it right there. <laughs> and I had to do the same thing. I had to learn to get out of my own way. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's just so interesting that how we can just think the same thoughts all day long and assume that they're correct because our brain is thinking them. So it's like, mm-hmm. oh, then it must be true when we could make up all kinds of crap. <laughs> <laughs> Just oh, to have absolutely. it going around you know, and around. It's it, one of the things I tell my daughter. I always tell her this because it, it resonates with me. This is a philosophy I learned years ago. Base your reactions and behavior on what you know, not on what you think. Because what you think has a bit, has the potential to be incorrect, but what you know can never be incorrect. And anytime you want to test that theory, throw a rock above your head, stand directly under it, and think you won't get hit. <laughs> so do you have just the one <laughs> child i have two actually okay. i have I have a 14 year old and i have a 32 year old okay <laughs> well that's a span um but yes. there's definitely life lessons that can be learned at both of those ages so yes. i'm sure that they can totally relate to the book do you do you feel like it all comes into play for relationships as well not just life Oh, you you just uh, actually talked about one of the chapters I have in my book. Okay, I have, a, I have a forty. I have a forty plus page chapter on relationships in the book, and oh. by by far the most feedback that I get from readers is from that chapter. And and I, I I encourage people to read the book, but I also let them know in in the very first chapter the best way, the most effective way to get the most out of the book is to read it from front to back. So the the chapter on relationships is chapter seven. People see the the layout on the table of contents in my book. They see that and they want to go right to that chapter. And it it would make sense in a in a to a point if you read it just that chapter. But if you read everything that leads up to that chapter, it will make perfect sense of what I'm saying in that chapter. 
okay. because I build on everything from there. But so I, I can't get people to understand. Don't skip to chapter seven. It'll make sense. But it's chapters one through six will make chapter seven make a lot more sense. Right. <laughs> what is it about relationships that you cover? Well, I talk about uh, how what men do to contribute or detract from a relationships. I talk about what a woman does. And I did it by talking with people. You know, I, I ran it by a, a bunch of couples that have been uh, married and in relationships for long periods of time before I even published it, you know, and my, my uh, and all of them said, you nailed it, you know, <laughs> because there are certain things that that men do that women don't realize we do and vice versa. You know, so it's like if you I think one of the keys to it is if you understand what the other one is thinking and why they think what they think, it's a lot easier to deal with. But what we end up doing is we actually expect us from our partner and that you they're not you. <laughs> yes. Right. Or assume <laughs> what they're thinking. I mean, yeah, that's what, never what, a good what, thing what, to do. What, what, <laughs> what did I say just a minute ago? React to what you know, not to what you think. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I just did a podcast episode the other day. It hasn't aired yet, but it was about love languages. And I asked her if what we do, me for my partner is what I want instead of what they want. And she said, yeah, that's mm -hmm. the, that's what everybody does. They, they figure out what their love language is and they do that for the other person. And the other person's like, I don't care about that. I don't care about gifts or, you know, exactly. It's so and interesting. I, and that's, that's, and that's why you have to pay attention to uh, what they, what they tell you, you know, a lot of like for me, um, I know a big character trait for me is integrity. It is just been instilled in me from yay high, you know, it's do the right thing, even when nobody's watching you, you know, so it, in when, when integrity is broken, it's really hard to get it back, you know, because, mm -hmm you have betrayed that one thing that you have total control of. You have control of whether you do the right thing or not. <laughs> yeah. You know, and if you choose, like I, I tell my daughter, anybody that chooses to, the worst thing you can do to somebody or do to yourself is lie to yourself. And if you are willing to lie to yourself, you have no problem lying to somebody else. Right. Right. You know, because you are the one person you can trust, but you are willing to lie to that person. You're not going to carry about anything else. So, right. Yeah. So you have to keep that in, keep those things in mind, you know, and in relationships, I think a lot of times what usually happens is we are expecting our partners to be the same way we are. And what I always say is a person can love you the way that you want to be loved, but they have to do it their way. <laughs> yeah. And you have to just accept it or don't. I mean, cause it's like, you can't change people. People are who they are. And just like that guy, the racist, <laughs> mm -hmm. that's just who they are. Well, then that's not the person for me. If you know, exactly. if, they, if they don't see themselves wrong ever, you got to be accountable for yourself. And it always sure. takes two. It always takes two, good or bad. And, and, and believe me, there there's a lot in the inf there's a lot of things I wrote in the book for personal, uh, like from personal experiences of that I've seen. And it, it's not like I've done it all because I can't say that, but I can tell you that 95% of what a person reads in my book I have personally seen, if not experienced. So it's one of those. I, I tried to write it from a logical standpoint, a reality based, you know, premise instead mm -hmm. of, oh, he just went to college and got these theories and all of that. No, it's not written like that at all. You know, if you're looking for $500 words in my book, you're not going to find them. <laughs> you know, I, I, I think the, you know, one of my theories is the best information is useless if the person on the receiving end of it doesn't understand it. So why complicate it? You know, it's yeah. easier than you think. <laughs> yeah. So do you go, you, are you a speaker? Do you go places and talk about all this stuff? I have absolutely, you know, as a, a mentor, I do things through my fraternity. I, I try to mentor young men. I've had uh, the privilege of talking with uh, a federal government agency uh, for their um, 
one of their cel celebrations, they okay, they flew me out to Dallas to uh, speak for them. I have fun doing it. You know, it, it's fun sharing the things that I have done and uh, experienced with other people. And it could, because I hope that one one of the things that I talk about will inspire somebody else, just like somebody took the time and inspired me. You know, so right. it, it's it's my way of paying forward. Yeah, I love that. And sometimes it is just one little random thing that somebody says that is like life altering. So I'm oh, sure absolutely. when you go and speak, I'm sure there's plenty of stuff that to you is just normal now because that's your mm -hmm. life. That's how you live is living through all of this. And there's other people that are not there yet. They have not gotten that far. And just one thing that you say might end up Changing and that's everything. all it, and that's all it takes. You know, the, it it I didn't know walking into that meeting with my supervisor that he was going to ask me those two questions. But those two questions changed my thought process completely. Yeah. You know, and and who knows, you know, I I always say you can learn something from everybody you meet. You know, yes. you learn you can learn what to do or you can learn what not to do. You 100%. know, but everybody has something that they can offer you. Yeah. Yeah. So you you I asked you if you were going to have a podcast. You said no, but you think you're going to write a couple more books. You have another few books in you. I have a few ideas in my head. I mean, I, I actually am dabbling with a, a fictional story that I'm I've been working on uh, for the first time. You know, somebody convinced me that I can write a fiction book. So I, I, uh, I, one of my, my, uh, friends from high school, she is a, uh, a writer as well. So she goes, why not try it? You know, and, and I'm actually having fun doing it. You oh, know? that's so great. It, 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 it's, it's interesting, but as far as the nonfiction, I have a lot of things going on in here. So it, it, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a favorite book? Nonfiction. Do you have a favorite book? You no, know, I, I really, I, I hate to say this because it's going to sound like a self plug, but the one I wrote. <laughs> I mean, and the, and the reason I say that is because I put, I poured my heart and soul into this book. You know, it, it's one of those things where I'm really trying to help people see another perspective because I, I know what it feels like to be in that rut where I think I know everything, you know, even though I know I don't, but I think I do. You know, and you have to be able to pull that away from yourself and go, you know what, let me just blank my mind out of what I think. Let me just focus on what somebody's telling me. And it go, mm -hmm. and then you, you, the, the light bulb came on for me. You know, once I was able to get past the ego, I, uh, one of my favorite quotes in life is by Dr. Rick Rigsby. Uh, his, his, he said it in a speech and I loved it. He said, ego is the anesthesia that deadens the pain of stupidity. Oh, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> and 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 it once he said it, it resonated with me. It was like ego. It it it's one. It's a barrier that it's like once you get past that, you can open yourself up to a lot of things. But a lot of people can't get past that because the ego is that that protective shield. You know, as long I know how everything works in here, and it goes uh, to the third chapter of my of my book, the comfort zone. You know, if you think about it, personal growth happens outside of the boundaries of the comfort zone. You know, we have this protective shield. I have this. I know how everything is going to work inside of this thing mm -hmm. right here. So I'm comfortable right here. You know, and I tell people the the comfort zone is a beautiful place because you know how everything looks. The problem <laughs> is nothing ever grows there. <laughs> you know, you That's have to true. step outside of it. And when you think about it in in perspective instead of perception, the journey outside of a comfort zone is one step. Yeah, that makes it seem kind of easy. But, but, but people, the, taking that first step is the hardest thing for a lot of people to do. And it's due to two things, fear or pride. They're either afraid of what they're going to have to do, or they don't feel they need to do what they, what they think they need to do. <laughs> Those are the only two things that stop a person from taking the first step towards progress. So once you get over that fear, you you take that step and the subsequent steps become easier. Yeah, we are definitely getting in our own way. And change is scary. Change is scary for people. Like Absolutely. you said, it's that comfort zone. I think mm -hmm. a lot of people, it's just like the not knowing they don't want to deal with. 
it's just better to be here and just assume you know everything. <laughs> yes. Well, you know, it's interesting because I use a lot of examples in my book. And I and that's why I, I did it the way that I, I wrote it, the way I wrote it, is I try to get people to see things just plain. Just think about it this way. In the 1800s, somebody had an idea. I have to do my work before the sun goes down because I can't see. Okay, I'm tired of holding a torch, you know, I need to have something else. So, okay, what do I need to allow me to see at night? You know, I don't know the scientific stuff. Let me go to Thomas Edison. Hey, Tom, can you help me out uh, to help me develop something that I can see at night without burning my hands? Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> and just that, just because of a two letter word, we don't have light bulbs. Right. So somebody has to say, you know, maybe I can get this done. Let me try, you know, and and that's the, the key to success. Somebody has to take a chance. If everybody said no, we'd never be anywhere. You know, right. I'm not familiar with it. So, no, I'm not going to do it. OK, then everybody will be stuck. Right. Yeah. Just nobody <laughs> moving. Everybody just looking around. <laughs> yes. It, so somebody has to take that initiative and go, you know what? Maybe I can do it. Let me try. Let me go. Now, yeah. Yeah. I'll take on, I'll take the task and I'll just go, you know, so it, you have to, and that's the whole prop, the whole process of my book to get people to look at and shift their thinking instead of what can go wrong, what can go right. You know, you, you, you look at things a lot differently when you do that, you know, you, you're not as hesitant, you know, what am I, to, what am I getting to gain? You know, what's the opportunity versus, uh Oh, what can, what can go wrong? Right. Yeah. Well, and not to blame this next generation coming up, it's not their fault, but they, they have a lot of ways to spend their time instead of going inward, you know, it's mm -hmm. get the, just get the device and just, I'll just scroll TikTok or Instagram sure. or, you know, but divert, you know, divert. Like, like we, you, you're probably in the same age group as I am. And it, we had to go in. Yes, you have the, the the technological advances, but if you think about it in the core text of things, you you why can't you? I mean, just because you find it on the internet doesn't mean it's true. You know, mm -hmm. we all know that. You know, mm -hmm. you know there there are you know they. I always tell people you have to look past. You you can't look past page one of the Google search to find the the thing on page 11 that nobody looks at it, that validates your thinking okay that's the one i'm looking at <laughs> but what about this other stuff up here you know all of this stuff that that has all of the factual things that contradict what you believe you right. know you pick this thing down here you know that's the <laughs> one thing you're looking at right you know, so it, it's 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 like you have to keep things in perspective you know i always tell people perspective doesn't change perception can always change and if you look at it in a sense i always use my an example of uh walking and slipping on a banana peel you know if you're walking with your head up and you're not looking down and you step on a banana peel what's going to happen you're going to slip and fall and right. every single time you do that you're going to slip and fall because that's what banana peels do but what we try to do is instead of adjusting our behavior to that banana peel and stepping over it, stepping around it, picking it up or whatever the case may be. We don't want to change what we do. We want the banana peel to grow legs, move out of our way and keep, <laughs> and we can keep moving. Right. So we, we try to get the, we try to change circumstances and you can't do that. You know, circumstances are what they are, you know, but your, your behavior to those circumstances, the reaction you have to those circumstances they can always change because it's it's something with you. And one of the things that I've learned is a lot of people make the mistake of trying to control the action and the reaction, and you can't do it. Right. A reaction does not generate with you. A reaction is something that's offered in response to an initial action. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. you only control the action. You don't control the reaction. And that's what people make them. They get frustrated. And I had yeah. to learn that too. You can't, you can't control a person's reaction. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot we can't control. And I think that a lot of people have problems with that, but mm -hmm. uh, you do have to change yourself and the way that you react to things and know that you don't have control. It's that we don't, we don't have the control. Well, you know, <laughs> here, here's, here's a thought that I, I came up with a person that tries to control everything sends an emphatic message that they don't have control of the one thing they do control themselves. Very true. 
I love that. <laughs> ah, this was such a great talk. Kevin, thank you. Tell people how they can find you and your book and all that good stuff. Oh, no problem. I'm actually on Facebook, uh, author Kevin E. Eastman. I always put my middle initial in there because uh, the the one of the creators of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, is named Kevin Eastman. That is not me. Yes, so, I found him. So. <laughs> I was like, that doesn't look like him. <laughs> no, that's not me. But uh, I'm on I'm on uh, Twitter or X or whatever they want to call it right. now. You know, uh, Instagram. I'm there as well. Uh, I do have a website. Kevin E. Eastman.com. Uh, you can get my, you can get links to the book on there. Uh, remember the book is don't gamble on life improvement until you shift the odds. The dice mean nothing. So it's not about gambling. Uh, <laughs> That's but, so funny. Uh, but, but if it helps I, the gambler, I, that's okay. <laughs> well, it, if it changes their perspective, that's great. You know, right. but what I try to do is I tell people anybody can find anything in this book. You will, it will either help you or it will help you help somebody you know. One of the two, because we all know somebody that can use information in this book. I don't right. care who you are. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'll definitely have to read it. I love it. Thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show. I appreciate it so much. And I will I definitely it. be in touch with you. Sounds good. All right. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.